Hi class, uh, we'll be having topic 49, which is the last topic for the mod. We are going to have solving rational equations. All right, well, let's start. You can use cross multiply to be able to solve rational equation when each side of the equation is a single fraction. See how in example number one, we have an equation set up as a proportion. So we can just simply cross multiply. That means that the denominator from one side of the equation will be multiplied to the numerator on the other side of the equation. So that will be five multiplied by three x minus five. Okay. And then to work with the uh, other side, it's going to be 20 multiplied by x minus two. So the denominator from one end will be multiplied uh, on the other side of the numerator. Okay, so up next, after setting it up, we are going to use distributive properties. So five times three x will give us 15 x. And then we multiply 5 and negative 5. That will be equal to negative 25. Now we do the same thing on the right side of the equation. 20 multiplied by x. That will be 20x. Finally, we multiply 20 and negative 2. That will be equal to negative 40. All right. Now, after uh, distributing, we can then be able to solve for x by putting x on the left side of the equation. And then the constant term will be on the right side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 20x. And then to be able to place the constant term on the right side, we're going to add 25. Now remember what you do on one side of the uh, equation needs to be done on the right side of the equation to keep it equal or balance. Now see how negative 25 plus 25 will be equal to zero. So that cancels out. 20x minus 20x will be equal to zero. All right. We can then have 15x minus 20x, which will be negative 5x equals negative 40 plus 25, negative 15. Now we're trying to solve x and the operation between negative 5 and x is multiplication. So we always do the opposite operation. To eliminate negative 5, we divide it by negative 5 on both sides of the equation. All right, so x would be equal to negative 15 divided by negative 5 to 3. See how negative 5 divided by negative 5 is equal to 1. So this will be our solution. x equals 3. Okay, so once again, when we have a problem to solve rational equations expressed as proportions, we use cross multiplication. And then distributive property. And then we want to put X on one side of the equation and solve for the variable. All right, now there are cases, a lot of cases where in this 
the rational equation will not be, be expressed as a proportion. So in cases like this, when a rational uh, equation is not expressed as a proportion, you can be able to solve it by multiplying each side of the equations by the least common multiple of each rational expression. So if we look at four, the denominators are four, x and 2x, let's find the LCM. LCM is the least common multiple. Knowing that we have 4x and 2x, our least common multiple will then be 4x. Okay, so that will be the LCM. Now what is the purpose of this LCM? The purpose of this is for you to be able to eliminate the denominator and help simplify the equation. Okay, so we are going to multiply the LCM uh, in each side of the equation on all the rational expressions. So we have 11 over 4. We multiply the LCM, which is 4x negative 3 over x multiplied by the LCM, which is 4x. Then we do the same thing in the right side of the equation, which is 5 over 2x multiplied by 4x. Okay. See how the denominator here, 4, is going to be eliminated because 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. All right. So what remains is 11 times x, which will be equal to 11x. And then the next part, the next term, we have um, x divided by x is equal to 1. So x in the denominator cancels out. What remains is negative 3 and 4. So negative 3 times 4 will give us negative 12. Moving on to the right side of the equation, we're going to divide 4x by 2x. So x will be canceled out because x divided by x is 1. And then 4 divided by 2 will give us 2. All right. So next step is to multiply 5 and 2. So 5 times 2 is going to be equal to 10. So we want x alone on one side of the equation. We're solving for the variable x. So we're going to eliminate negative 12 by adding 12 on both sides of the equation. This leaves us with 11x on the left side. So we know that negative 12 plus 12 is 0. And then adding 10 plus 12 will give us 22. All right, so the operation between 11 and x here is multiplication. So we do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So we divide both sides by 11. So 11 divided by 11 is 1. So x is now alone on the left side of the equation. And we know that 22 divided by 11 is going to be 2. So our solution will be x equals 2. All right. Now uh, let's work with the last example. Now, um, there will be cases wherein we will end up having a solution wherein x is uh, equal to something. And that number sometimes will be an extraneous solution. Now, when do you uh, get an extraneous solution? Supposing you have the denominator 
okay, in one of your denominator is um, x plus 7. If your denominator is x plus 7, and what you were able to get for x is negative 7, substituting x to negative 7 will give us negative 7 plus 7, which should then be equal to 0. Now, you can never divide by 0. So in that case, when x is negative 7, it is said to be an extraneous solution. All right, so let's work with this one and find out if we end up having an extraneous solution or not. So if you look at um, the denominator, you don't have the same denominator. So that means you will need to find the LCD. Now remember that um, you can use spatial products when you, when you deal with uh, this type of problems. Um, here we have x squared minus 16. Okay. It has the pattern, the difference of two squares. Because 16 is a perfect square. The square root of 16 is 4, so 4 squared is 16. So it is indeed a perfect square. Now when you have the difference of two squares, it follow this what we call pattern b squared minus b squared is equal to the product of the two binomials, the, two value, uh, the sum of the difference of the two binomials, the sum and the difference. So that means when we rewrite f squared minus 16, it will be in terms of factors, it will be x plus 4, the product of the sum and difference of the two binomials, times x minus 4. All right? And then we know that the numerator is 6x squared. Now, the other... Um, Denominators are x plus 4 and x minus 4. So that tells us that the LCM would be x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 4. All right, so that is our LCM. So we're going to multiply all the terms by the LCM, x plus 4, x minus 4. Going to multiply this by x plus 4, x minus 4. Then we have minus 3x divided by x plus 4. So we're going to multiply this by the LCM, which is x plus 4 times x minus 4. Okay. And then uh, we have equals 4 over x minus 4. Equals 4 over x minus 4. So you also need to multiply by the LCM. All right. So once again, the purpose of the LCM here is to eliminate the denominator and simplify the equation. See how x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 is equal to 1, so that cancels out. x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 is equal to 1, so that cancels out as well. What remains on your first fraction would just simply be 6x squared. All right. And then up next, we have x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 in here. That would then be negative 3x multiplied by x minus 4. Okay. Working on the right side of the equation. 
x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 will be equal to 1. So what remains is 4 multiplied by x plus 4. Okay? All right. Now, next step, we will use distributive property. I'm going to distribute uh, 3x, negative 3x times x. So let's have 6x squared down here. Negative 3x times, times x will be negative 3x squared. And then negative 3x times negative 4 will be equal to 12x. All right, moving on to the right side of the equation. 4 times x will be 4x. And then 4 times 4 is going to be 16. All right. Now, uh, see how we can also combine like terms in here. So 6x squared and negative 3x squared will be like terms. So that will be 6x squared minus 3x squared will be 3x squared. All right. Now we are solving for x. However, it is on the left side and as well as on the right side of the equation. What we'll do in here is to bring everything on the left side of the equation so that it will be equal to zero and then use factoring and the zero factor property to solve for s. So to place everything on the left side of the equation, I'm going to subtract 4x and 16. So that will be minus 4x minus 16. 4x minus 4x is 0, so that cancels out. 16 minus 16 is 0. So this will then be equal to 0 down minus 16. 12x minus 4x will be 8x. And then we have 3x squared. All right. So we have a, a trinomial that has the first terms leading coefficient not equal to 1. So we have a numeric coefficient other than 1. So what we'll do in here is to multiply that numeric coefficient by the third term. The purpose of this is for us to be able to use factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping entails that we have four, four terms, rather. To achieve that, we are going to split 8x into two terms. To find out what those numbers are, we first need to uh, multiply the numeric coefficient of the first term and the constant term. So that will be 3 times negative 16 is equal to negative 48. Now after finding the product of the first term's numeric coefficient and the last term, uh, the product's negative 48, you will need to find factors of negative 48. When you add them, results in positive 8. All right, so here we can have 12 and 4. 12 times 4 will give us 48. All right, however, the middle term needs to be positive 8. So to be able to do, to achieve that, we're going to make uh, the 12 as positive because it is the one that has a higher absolute value and then uh, the 4 will be negative. So 12 plus negative 4 will be equal to 
8, which is our middle term, and then 12 times negative 4 will be equal to negative 48, which is the product of the first and last term's numeric coefficients. All right, so this means that 8x will be split into 2, which is going to be 12 and negative 4x. 12x and negative 4x. So let's write the rest in here. So 3x plus 8x being split into 2, into 12x minus 4x minus 16 equals zero. Now that we have four terms, we can then be able to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group my first two and my last two. Remember there's a plus sign in here, okay? The next step is um, find the greatest common factor of each of these two groups, okay? So for the first group, the greatest common factor is 3x. So we'll do 3x squared divided by 3x is x. And then we'll have 12x divided by 3x is 4. You can even check 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 4 is going to give us 12x. All right. Now, here, what will be the um, greatest common factor of negative 4x and negative 16? It will be negative 4. So next step is to divide negative 4x by negative 4. That will then be equal to x. And then you divide negative 16 by negative 4. That will be equal to 4. Okay, notice that there is a common factor in here. The x plus 4 on the first group is identical to the x plus 4 on the second group. So that signifies that you have done the factor by grouping correctly. So here we're going to group the outside factors, 3x minus 4. And then the second factor will be the common factor, which is x plus 4. All right. Now, using zero-factor property, we're going to assign each of these factors equal to 0 and then solve for x independent. Let's work here on the first one. So we want x alone, so I eliminated the negative 4 by adding 4 on both sides of the equation. And negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so that cancels out. So we're solving for x. We simply divide by 3 in here so that x will be alone on the left side of the equation. So we have x equals 4 over 3. Then the next group, we'll find x. It will show x equals negative 4. Now going back to the original problem, we have x equals negative 4 and x equals 4 over 3. If we substitute 4 over 3 in the original problem, you will not encounter uh, a denominator being equal to 0, right? However, if you are going to substitute, let's find the other value. Uh, of uh, if you are going to substitute negative 4 for x, you will end up having one of the denominators going to be equal to 0 because negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0. So that means that negative 4 is an extraneous solution.
So the only logical solution would just be x equals 4 over 3. Now, if it happens that uh, instead of getting x equals negative 4, you ended up having x equals 9 or any other number, um, let's say 15 or whatever, it's not going to give you an extra new solution because when you substitute those numbers, they will not give you a denominator of 0. So if you had x equals 4, that will be an extra new solution because one of the denominators will be equal to 0. All right? So that concludes our um, topic 49. Okay? Have a great day, ladies.